Are you looking for that European or craft beer culture? Breathe Wine and Culture Company, where your wine and craft beer culture thrives. Located in Cross Lanes, West Virginia, and coming soon to downtown Huntington, West Virginia, the Breathe Wine and Culture Company offers over 150 types of craft beer, extensive wine choices, thoughtful gifts, and even grab-and-go food options as well as specialized catering. Shop local, shop small for a unique experience. You can check them out on their Facebook page or give them a call today at 304-823-4577. Breathe Wine and Culture Company, 304-823-4577. guys welcome to another segment of on the limb podcast with nature's voice game calls guys we're actively in trade show season we're just now coming back in the studio from the archery trade show in st louis missouri and uh, we just got done with our local show here in west virginia the west virginia hunting and fishing show brought to you by the west virginia trophy hunters association and the headlining sponsor this year was the west virginia dnr so Tonight, we have uh, Brett McMillian on, the director of the West Virginia DNR. But first, we're going to have the big announcement from Laurel Fork Farms and Outdoors, the raffle that they had going on at the West Virginia Hunting and Fishing Show for the Freedom Farms Regeneration. That's also part of uh, Hunter Specialty specialty Products. Yeah, I lost place there. But so many things to talk about and so many things to say. So, (laughs) Anyways... So, without further ado, James Ross with Laurel Fork Farms and Outdoors. How you doing, sir? Hey, good to talk to you guys again. I felt like I just saw you here not too long ago. Yeah, we had a good time at the West Virginia Hunting and Fishing Show, didn't we? Oh, every year it's the same way. Uh, Great time with you guys and the the folks down there at Freedom Farms. And, you know, just all of our good friends. Yep. So uh, That that snow kind of hurt us this year a little bit, I think, though. So, still a pretty decent turnout, but you'll have that. Yeah, it it did hurt us a little bit, but uh, we have Gary and uh, George with Hunter's Choice Specialty Products on here. How you guys doing this evening? Doing uh, great, doing great. Finally like, getting warm. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, it was about forty eight today, wasn't it? No, it was almost sixty. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, was it was warm. It was pretty nice up this way. Oh, that's good. So, hey, all this... uh, hey Mike, if you don't mind, hey James, before you make the announcement. Right? I just want to tell you from uh, from me and George and Lori and uh, Freedom Farms and everybody, uh, we can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, you doing this for us. Uh, we we love what we do, and we just uh, for somebody else to show some interest in uh, in the kids and, and and our passion for what we're doing is it that's a big deal. So um, to you guys for doing it and Mike for promoting it. I, I, we just want to we want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts for everything you are doing for us. Yeah, thank you guys for Hey, for thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. that. We, uh, you know, my wife uh, and Casey uh, Booth and, uh, you know, Nature's Voice and all, the, all of our uh, fellow friends there, we, we we did put a lot of effort into this, and I wish we had more time. We could have raised probably a good bit of money for the, the Freedom Farms. Yeah, I think I think it went well. There were several booths there at the hunting and fishing show selling tickets. Uh, Hunter's Choice was selling tickets. We were selling tickets. Laurel Fork Farms and Outdoors was selling tickets. Um, who else? Highland Outfitters yeah, Highland. was selling tickets as well. Wow. So, so we got we got a lot of people involved in this, and uh, you know we just appreciate all their help yeah, promoting sure it. All right, James. Uh, it was it, it was a it, it was very successful, no doubt. Uh, and it's you know this this is just um, and a good example of what we do together uh, and our not only our businesses and our organizations, but our customers and what they they support. They come out in full force and they support us well. And from the bottom of our hearts, I mean, we're very thankful for that. Yep, absolutely, definitely. All right, okay, James. Okay, you ready for the? You yep. ready for the? No- 
Let, hey, let's uh, actually let's go reverse order. Let's uh, let's uh, do the deer processing. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Uh, for that one, we have and forget my vision; it's going out. But uh, Orlando Huffman, he's got the deer processing uh, either at S and J and or with Freedom Farms. And he, he will be called. He has not been notified yet. The second prize is the uh, the charter of special eyes, uh, the big uh, trophy walleye fishing trip up at Lake Erie. Oh, yeah, it's a good trip. It, with, with Dale and Diane Grimm. Now, he has been notified. We did get a hold of him already. Uh, Adam Gum uh, won the that trip, and he'll go on the annual Old Fort Farms and Outdoors. We call it. The freezer filling catching trip up there with special eyes. <laughs> and we're going to catch, catch some big old Waldos and put them in the freezer. Nice. Right. And uh, I mean that's a well, pretty that's a pretty big prize in itself. But the first prize is is a big prize too. Well, the special eyes trip is is like you said is a very good trip because Lake Erie is a beautiful place, especially up in Ashtabula. I mean that's what that's a that's a great place. And, our friends are specialized, and like you already mentioned, the Highland Outfitters, and uh, you know Paul Ronk, all those guys with uh, the maple syrup and Nature's Voice. My God, we do we we work well together, you know. There's, oh, absolutely. There's no... You got a nice little corner back here at the hunting West Virginia Hunting and Fishing Show that we try to take over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right, Dan. Well, I mean, we establish it by force. That's for sure. That's right. Yeah. Hey, we're getting closer to that corner. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, are. You yeah, are. Y'all, y'all keep moving down there. Uh, you guys will be right there with us. You get down there with us. We'll take over the whole show, buddy. I'm telling you, we'll have everybody in that back corner. <laughs> we'll eat good at least. Won't we? Yeah, we will. See, that'll that'll meat. help all of us. While everybody's waiting in line to get their trout. Yeah, we'll be. They'll be rousing all of our stuff. Oh yeah, that's what you do, man. You got you got to bring them into the booth and keep them waiting. You know. That's why I talk. Like, <laughs> if if there's somebody walking by my booth and they ain't looking my way, I talk to them. That's hey, right. how you doing? It turns their head our way, and they stop. Yep. I mean, that's what you got to do. Yeah, you can't just stand there and expect them to stop and talk anyhow. No, you, you got to get their attention. You, you got to engage. Yep. All right, let's go with number one. Number one, here we go. Big winner. Are we ready for this? Brrr, it's not me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I didn't even have to ask for the drum roll. Hey, I want to congratulate for the – Either the Enforcer Deer Blonde or the Millennium Solo Buck Hut. This person's choice. The first prize for the Freedom Farms Regeneration. We are very honored to announce that Larry Cook is the winner of that. And big congratulations. Nice. Yeah. Woo. Congrats, buddy. Congrats, Larry. So where's, where's Larry from? Is he West Virginia native? Um, he's actually from Shady Spring. Oh, is no, he really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, bought tickets yesterday. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, you, you guys won't believe this. I mean, you know, we we do a very yeah you know, we we do run a very strict show on this, and we're very thankful for Larry coming in and uh, doing that because he's supporting uh, Freedom Farm as well, and that. You know, we're we're very amazed that uh, this turned out so well, and we're we're thankful once again to everybody. And our our offer to anyone that took part and supported this, whatever you need from Old Fort Farms and Outdoors, it, you just give us a ring, or we're getting a hold of you. We know who we have to call, and our our offer still stands because you know you trusted us and you supported. That's awesome, man. Well, James, thanks well, James. for making that announcement. And uh, Gary and George, thank you guys for being on here and being a part of that. And, you know, I, we know that this is going to a good cause. Yeah, thanks for everything you yeah, guys well, are doing with Mike, this. Thank you guys for promoting this. And uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate all you do. And, and we're just thankful for you guys. And, and you know, we're family. Yes, Absolutely. we are. That's Family's right. Family is the word. Family is yeah, right. We actually had we actually had one of our graduates from the program come down on uh, Saturday, and uh, James got to meet him, and uh, he hung out at our booth you know, pretty much all afternoon. Man, that's awesome. And uh, he was uh, um, is it, these kids 
the, these kids aren't one and done. I mean, the majority of these kids, after they're out of there, they still keep in contact. Uh, they still talk to us. So, I mean, this is uh, uh, this is a forever thing for us. So, I, mm. I, I just I appreciate you all helping out. Hey, I was honored to meet him, and I appreciate you bringing him down. That was a good kid right there, and he is very focused on the future. And uh, my wife and I, we gave uh, our information to him. If he ever needs anything, you know, and thank you for doing that. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for being on and making that announcement. We're going to take a break right now, and then we'll be back with Brett McMillian, the director of the West Virginia DNR. This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Apparition Sense, an outdoor and sporting goods company based in Dillinger, Pennsylvania. All of their scents developed and hand bottled with strict attention being paid to every detail. Contact them today at 724-998-7646 or check them out at apparitionsense.com. 100% lethal or your money back guaranteed. Get a hold of them today at 724 998 Seven six four six, or check them out at apparitionsense.com. Hey guys, welcome back after that announcement that we had there from Laurel Fork Farms and Outdoors and Hunter's Choice Specialty Products. Man, that's a great thing that they're doing with Freedom Farms. You know, those those kids, awesome. that's awesome. Great. that it's money great. is going to those kids, you know, to keep them in the outdoors. You know, it helps them during the holidays and it helps them get the foundation that they need because they don't have the family structure. You know what I mean? So I'm so glad that they're, they're supporting that. So right now we have uh, Brett McMillian. Director of the West Virginia DNR. How you doing, Brett? I'm doing very well. How are you this evening? Oh, we're doing we're good. We're doing great. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on this evening. Sorry we left you there uh, hanging a little over. We <laughs> we get them guys to talking about that giveaway that we done there at the hunt show, and it just it just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> so we appreciate your patience there. No problem at all, and I, I certainly appreciate that. And referencing back to the statement you made, we can't do enough to get youth involved into the, the sport. Yes. No, we can't. For sure. We try our best. I mean, that's all we can do is yeah. I keep, mean, you're right. keep trying and keep pushing it on them and giving them that opportunity to to experience the joys of it. I yeah. mean, that's, that's really what it boils down to. It's the joys of yeah. the outdoors. Yeah. I'm telling you, a lot of issues in schools and things like that, I think a lot of stuff that, like that, can be solved with just getting in the woods, yeah. experiencing the nature and the, the, the creation of God. I just, I, I think something like that. Oh, yeah. For sure. the kid's life. I mean, you, you learn yeah. so much from hunting. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. So you bet. It's it's not about just the kill. It is about the actual experience. You guys yeah. are nailing it. Yeah. I, I love hearing those comments. It sure is. So, uh, Brett, we first met you at the Woods and Water Expo there in Somersville, West Virginia. You came by our booth there just for, just for a brief minute. Uh, mm -hmm. that was back in 2022, right before your, uh, induction, I believe, or it may have been after, I can't remember. I think maybe just shortly after, but yeah, okay. right at the, at the beginning of this, this, uh, this venture I'm in now. So, yeah. I got you. So you're, you're a graduate of West Virginia university. Yes, sir. Went, uh, went there, started out at Potomac state and of course, uh, native of Nicholas County and went to Richwood high school. Oh, okay. Awesome. Done a lot of fishing up Richwood. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Hey. For sure. Well, you know, back, back in the day, the beauty of it was the old high school was right next to cherry river. Mm -hmm. so... Cherry river, man. <laughs> Favorite river. In the state. That's where I learned how to trout hunt or trout fish. <laughs> trout hunt. Yeah. Or, well, I was hunting them, buddy. I was hunting them. them. Yeah. I'd, I'd shoot them. Catch them. I'd do whatever. <laughs> no, wait, wait, Brad. I didn't do that i'm just kidding 
<laughs> he hunts and fishes trout. Oh, you betcha. What, whatever it takes. That's right. He said, just as long as you only got your krill limit, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Big go. Big go. All right. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with West Virginia DNR and what you've done prior to that. Sure. Yeah. Right. When I was getting close to my, I guess my junior year I, at WVU, I started a, a seasonal job at Cooper's Rock State Forest, and I really didn't know what direction I wanted to go. I had uh, lots of thoughts in my head, but uh, I tell you, after working a summer there, and then it turned into a second summer, I thought, man, this this park system's pretty cool. I'm gonna test the water. So I bounced around for a couple of years and I uh, ended up landing a position at Panther State Forest and uh, that kind of started my career with the, the DNR. Uh, worked at Panther for a couple of years and then moved over to Bluestone State Park, then up to Pipe Stem. Then I served a short stint as the Deputy Chief of Parks and then this opportunity for director presented and uh, not couldn't pass it up. I mean, this is such a, a great agency as a whole. We've got so many good people. The support that we get from our governor, I, I'm, I'm just astounded by his interest in DNR. I feel yes. like we're the lead agency in the state, and I don't want to make others jealous, but uh, man, it's good. Sure. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. I, I'm in the same boat. I, I love what our governor has done for the state when it comes to tourism and the West Virginia mm -hmm. DNR, natural resources, and oh, absolutely. hunting and fishing. I mean, he has brought so much to the table and, you know, he, yes. it just the advertising and the marketing of it and the way that we're bringing in other yeah. people from other States, we're making it almost heaven. Just like yeah. it, just like the name of well, it. And it, it. It helps. It does help a lot that he is an avid outdoorsman himself. Yeah, he so is. That helps tremendously. You betcha. You bet you. And, and I mean, I can tell you from my time in the park system in, in 2015, our budgets were reduced to, we were barely making it. And then in the, uh, late 2015, early 2016, uh, a couple of areas were actually removed from the state park inventory. And uh, we thought, oh, wow, this is not, not good at all. And then when the governor took office, he showed his priorities and he said, you know, tourism, it, it's a, a business that we have to invest in. Yes. And it, it, it turned everything around. So, I mean, it, it's amazing. I give all the kudos to him and uh, he is still and he's going to work right until the last day he leaves office he is still pushing just as hard as ever so uh, I, I i just can't speak highly enough i know there's a a lot of folks out there that might not agree with everything he says or does but but he is a believer in our state at the end of the day nobody can dispute that no, yeah absolutely you're, not. you're you're exactly right when you talk about that for sure yeah so before we jump in a little bit further here with you uh what we like to do on every episode is our salute to Valor. <clears throat> salute a service member, man or woman, what be it. So tonight our salute's going to go out to Seth Cole from Medicine Lodge, Kansas. He was an Army E-4 in the Army. Yeah, he was an E-4 in the Army. E4 in the Army, <laughs> yeah. Golly, let me spit this out here. He served four years stationed out of Fort Stewart, Georgia. He did one tour of our the duty to Iraq where he was injured. Uh, he was met back, back to the States in 2007 to do two years of rehab. He had to learn how to walk and talk all over again. Oh, wow. So he was, wow. he was wow. injured fairly, fairly bad, obviously. Yeah. So his medals, yeah. he, he's modest man. He's nothing special. He's received an ARCOM, AAM, Iraq service medal with the campaign star. And it says here he's got screwed out of his purple heart. So that's not in the mix oh. right now. So he's still fighting to get that. And obviously, I mean – he gets with the right people. They're going to help him. He he yeah. obviously deserves that. If he had to learn how to walk again and talk, oh my again. gosh, He's, yeah, he yeah, was injured very very heavily. So wow, we'll yeah. we'll be hoping for you there and hoping you can get your medal, what you deserve there. So he you bet your we can't retired. support those folks enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He medically got retired in uh, July of two thousand and nine. Oh, so wow. so he's been he's out been a while. he's been fighting for what thirteen years now. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. that's such a shame how I'm going to say it. Cause I can, I have that right. How piss poor our VA system is. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I've, I've seen it firsthand. I've been denied so many things and mm -hmm. people mm. bitch at me all the time. They're like, well, you need to go back and try again. It's like, I don't, I don't want to fight it. Yeah. I really don't care. You, do, you just get tired of, you do be yeah. a part of the system, yeah. you know? 
Uh, Bureaucracy can be difficult to navigate through. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And that's a shame. And this guy's a hero. Absolutely. I mean, it's, for it's sure. It's bad to hear. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, we want to give a shout out to Operation Cherry Bend. That's where we get uh, our salute to Valor's Kate Runk. She helps her dad run that uh, there in Ohio. And uh, the mission of Operation Cherry Bend is to lift up their vet- our veterans for their courage, selflessness, and sacrifice to our country. And they do that by creating a strong network with events, adventures, and music. So what they do is they bring them out and they do pheasant hunts with them and they fish with them. And oh. it's just like being at home, but you're you're going on an adventure. You know, they, yeah. they, have a, they have a house there, old farmhouse that you can stay in. They fix you breakfast, dinner, lunch. Great, great. great. Great, great people. Great people. That's, that's great. That that's awesome. Yep. So, and they're at the West Virginia Hunting and Fishing Show every year. So they've they've been coming right. now for I think the last nine years, nine or ten years. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. They're they're really good people. So we appreciate what they do. You bet. You sounds like the the directions right in their heart and head. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So let's get back into a little bit of your uh, your background there. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so it, uh, I tell you, it's been quite a journey. I have been blessed, and uh, I, I think my time in state government really kind of helped to prepare me for where I'm at now. Just understanding some of the, the internal red tape and bureaucracies we deal with at the state level. Yes. Sure. Um, I feel very fortunate, too, having made numerous connections over the years and knowing a lot of the existing staff, not only from the DNR, but the other agencies that we work with so closely. Uh-huh. Um, I, I feel like it's really helped me there. And, you know, I didn't come into the job completely green. Uh, still had a lot of green limbs on, but, <laughs> but, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it's been a, uh, quite an experience. Um, couldn't, couldn't think of a better way to, to end my career with the DNR is, is in this particular role. And, you know, even after I'd been in the park system 25 years, I've learned so much in the last couple of years, agency wide and heck, even state government wide. Um, it's really a fascinating organization as a whole, you know, regardless of all the, the, the myths and the, everything out there about DNR and state government. Yeah. When you get in and actually learn about the nuts and bolts of it, it's, it's pretty fascinating. And uh, it definitely keeps you busy. I, I will say it's a, it's a very active agency these days. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. So um, hitting back on this last weekend here, what role – and what all did the WVU DNR do for the hunting and fishing show this year? We know that it was a lot of, I've seen a bunch of lifetime licenses and stuff like yeah. that get given away and what have you. So if you don't care to divulge into that a little bit more. And you guys, oh, sure. you guys were kind of like the headlining sponsor this year for the hunting and fishing show, correct? That, that's right. We'd always played a, a role in it as far as setting up our booths and uh, having a, a presence. But we had a, an opportunity this year to work with the trophy hunters a little closer, be the main sponsor, yeah. uh, be on center stage for a variety of seminars. Of course, we started out with the, the ribbon cut. Then we rolled right into our, our uh, governor's big buck photo contest. Yep. And there was probably, I don't know, six, eight six or eight seminars throughout the weekend where we had some of our staff members up and we were just able in that little 30 minute slot to hit the highlights of some of the programs, but it was just really a good opportunity for um, us to show the the hunters and fishers of West Virginia, some of our our DNR staffers and give them a chance to get out. And then of course, push the, the youth and anybody that's not a current uh, uh, sportsman or sportswoman to, to get involved. Um, you know, we've got a strong push from our wildlife resources section and our outreach folks there to uh, grow the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program, and we've saw a lot of good success with it this year. That's good. Uh, that, that program's been led by Ashley Anderson, and uh, now we have Kayla Donathan back, and I'm challenging them to grow it even more ne- uh, in 2024. So, I think it's a an avenue that that everyone internally is embracing and realizes, hey, this is this is the direction we need. The governor's pushed it hard. He wants us to to become that that public service agency that that we were set up to be many years ago. Yeah, and I, I agree with him on that. I mean, sure. that's 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 the way it should be. I think you are doing a great job, and it's it's working out great. So. 
So, yeah, we were able just to, to bounce in. Uh, it turns out, I, I believe my deputy director, Brian Bolliard, had a connection with uh, the promoters that uh, the trophy hunters uh, use, Jim Strong. Yes. And they struck up a conversation, uh, it's been a couple of months back, and I think that uh, that pitch was thrown to Brian. He brought it to me, and I thought, wow, this is this is awesome. Let's talk to the boss. And of course, heck, he didn't even let me finish the sentence. And he, he was, yes, do it. Go give me, give me more. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I mean, it was, it was literally just that easy. That's awesome. Um, so, so yeah, that, you know, we're looking for those type of events. Yeah. And um, we need to continue to strive to, to get that good word out. And yeah. uh, that was a, a really good venue. I haven't heard the final count yet. I've been, Tied up in the, uh, I guess I could say the the legislative side of it for the last two days, and uh, it looked like great attendance from what I heard. I got to spend most of the day Friday there, yeah. Um, and Friday the kickoff was a little slow, but the dang going weather didn't cooperate. So, no, it did uh, not. That's, that's okay. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that we had to fight this year for sure, but. Yeah, we, we still yeah. had a great time, and you know, there on Saturday the the people started to roll in and. It really didn't start slowing down until probably six. <clears throat> I, yeah, probably about six or seven. Yeah. And then on Sunday, you know, it, it stayed busy all the way up till right at about four. About four. Yeah. So an hour before closing time. So it, it did yeah. uh, it did really well there on Sunday, too. Yeah. That's great. That's exactly the reports my folks gave. So, so good. That's, that's awesome. Hopefully we broke a record on numbers, but I think average attendance has been around 15,000 or so for each of those events. So that's a lot of, a lot of folks to, to reach out and touch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it was this the first time that the West Virginia DNR has sponsored this show? Because in the 36 years that it's been in existence, I don't think I've missed a one. I know that I've always seen you guys be there and you all, mm-hmm. you all have always had a presence there, but I'm not sure that I ever remember you guys being a headlining sponsor. Yeah. I, I don't believe it had ever occurred before. I did ask that same question and the answer was no, but we didn't dig back into the early years to see if there was a connection, but it's yeah, not, sure. if there was, it had to be really early on. Yeah. Right. And I, I think so. it's, it's just, a, it's just a great connection. It, should it is, and it, it hopefully is one we'll be able to continue in the future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know you guys do a lot with other venues and stuff, like the Eleanor Eleanor uh, Youth Shoot Day mm-hmm. down there. I, mm-hmm. I've I've dealt with your guys quite often. I help a lot of times on the muzzleloader range, which is right oh, next great. to your guys there slinging skeet. So I've I've gotten, <laughs> I've gotten to know some of them guys pretty well and talked to them and. Great, great group of guys great. you guys have there. I mean, really, people people great. get that p- sore misconception. Oh, they're all they're all jerks. Yeah. They're all out to get me. No, they're not. They're <laughs> they're just trying. If to... If you're following the law, exactly. they're not out to get you. Exactly. That's exactly. the thing, and, and and that's that's what I was going to say. Is like, uh, um, you know, I've had a lot of interactions with different law enforcement. You know, I mean, you you know, get pulled for speeding or you, mm-hmm. whatever. But you know, I've I've never been shown the amount of respect that I have you know, from the DNR, yeah. you know, it just seems like they always have respect for people. E- even, you know, e- even if they think you might be doing something, you know, like, uh, I got, uh, you know, I was kayak fishing at uh, Somersville Lake and I got stopped and asked for my license and I didn't have it on me cause I was on, you know, I didn't want to have my wallet on the, on the thing, but they looked mm-hmm. it up. They looked it up for me. They were courteous. Yeah. They found me on my, in the system oh, yeah. yep. and everything That's was good. cool, you know? And, uh, like I say, even in a si- instance like that, they still show that respect. You, you do. You get. You have a lot of good guys oh, over there. They do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we do. And I tell you, our our colonel has embraced that. I mean, he is a one hundred percent public service. He he preaches to his guys, and and uh, he can't deliver a better message to them. And they're all receptive. I mean, uh, yeah. I had the opportunity today to participate in a, in a small award ceremony we had for a couple of our guys. And, and that was my message in the beginning that, um, these guys all have that inner drive and determination in them that creates these dedicated officers. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it humbles me to see how they work. Um, you know, we have done, and we don't publicize a lot of these things, but our, our law enforcement and wildlife section 
uh, both have have undertaken several really cool projects this year, focusing on kids and vets. And we've did uh, three yeah. or four hunts and, and fishing trips with them. And uh, we've we've worked with the Mountaineer Challenge Academy two, three, four times this year. I can't remember how many now. But nice. just to see those guys, those officers interacting with the youth, the vets, of the challenge kids, um, it it's just so good to see that uh, it it normalizes the, our officers, and uh, they are compassionate, whether the the rest of the public wants to believe it or not. They are just a super bunch of guys and gals. Yeah, and you know, since it's ex- uh, it has came in to be an actual law enforcement agency, like you know, it's you know the DNR police now. Mm-hmm, and and mm-hmm, pe- right. people look at it as a law enforcement agency now. They didn't really before. I mean, they kind of did, but now you kind of fall in the same category as, you know, your city and your municipalities and stuff like that, like your counties. So, yep. you know, it's it's good that they get out there in the public like that and spend the time face-to-face yes. oh, with absolutely. the community, you yeah. know. Yeah. That's how you, you betcha. And, uh, you know, one of their big challenges that most other law enforcement agencies don't have is – uh, these officers are are policing their customers, so you know they they realize that. So they do handle things just yeah. just like slightly differently than than standard LE. Yeah, I have never so, had a bad experience with uh, West Virginia DNR. I know some people that yeah. have, but you know that could be indifferent either way. <laughs> sure, you know, sure it can. May, it sure may be can. they had a bad day, or it may be the other person was. Oh, yeah, that's you know you just though. never know. That's yeah, anybody. Yeah, so. Yeah. But for yep, me, we're and, all human. Yep, that's right. And me, from my personal experience, I've always had a good time with them. You know, good, a good experience. Yeah. yeah. So you all had uh, there was an elk uh, coloring contest there at the uh, hunting show. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about that elk project and that program and how it's thriving in the state. Oh yeah, it's it's very exciting. So we'd ha- we'd had a couple of shipments of elk. Uh, Oh, up and from 2016 to 2018, and then uh, hoping that the herd had grown. We're somewhere around 100 to 110 animals on site now. We are having, we do have some West Virginia born elk, uh, some some calves, and uh, I think two weeks ago the governor announced that we're going to be getting 40 more from the land between the lakes in Kentucky. Nice. Uh, we're hoping to see uh, the first batch arrive soon. I think we'll probably hear an announcement uh, on next day or so from the governor once we finally get all some the logistics put together. But uh, believe me, he's he's right into this thing. It's you know, it's pretty interesting for me to to hear and see him showing that interest in these projects when there's, there's so many other things going on in the state. But the elk project is uh, it's I, I call it a success story. I think this restoration effort um, is is going to grow more this year. Soon we'll be announcing a, a couple of other big ticket items related to the project and i hope that we continue a relationship with the the lb land between the lakes uh for for elk for years to come i think there's some opportunities there and we're going to certainly explore those we we had an elk management plan put together and uh i should have had that number fresh in my head but i wanted to say 250 300 or so animals on the ground before we started talking about any kind of hunts that's exactly what I was we, yeah, yeah that was my next question so. yeah, I, I knew that one would, would come out soon and if we continue to supplement and add to this herd that's going to happen a lot quicker yeah, yes. so uh we're really really focusing in on that pretty hard i know the uh the folks in southern west virginia are still proud of this project want to continue to grow so oh, we absolutely. need to be responsive to it yeah. So, uh, what it, it, I'm sure it'll just be a lottery style system, like, like having Kentucky, something like that. Um, when it does yeah, come to it most likely will be. I believe Virginia may have had their first one this year, and it was very limited. I don't remember the numbers. I think it was in the single digits, and and ours will likely start out that sure. way too. Yeah. Um, you know the the plan this year was to get forty, twenty bulls, twenty, uh, twenty cows, and then those cows will likely be pregnant or we're hoping that they're pregnant. So we could see a nice bump. I mean, I'm, I'm a big optimist. So I'm saying, yeah, we're getting 60, but at the end of the day, we all know that's probably not going to happen. There'll be a few that that do not survive or something will happen during the pregnancy. But, you know, seeing, let's say we get 50. I mean, that's a almost a 50% increase right away. And if we can continue that trend over the next few years, we're going to meet our goals much quicker. Right. Absolutely. so that's the that's the the 
the direction we're heading and uh we're 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 hitting it as hard as we can yep i know for a fact once it comes to fruition i'll be i'll be putting in every year doing everything i can that's that's gonna be interesting yeah there's a lot of people within the state waiting for it you know i mean i'm i'm thinking you know we've talked before but i'm thinking that it's it's looking at probably 10 15 years from now you know i mean probably a safe bet yeah unless we can you know come up with some numbers significantly faster than than we can see and you know that's frankly been the biggest challenge is actually acquiring these critters um you know the the covid thing really slowed Mm -hmm. all prospects down just because of the fear of any transportation etc blah 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 right Um, but 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 we're through that now we've actually received great support not only from our our state wildlife section, our, our state ag, our state vets, Kentucky vets, U.S. I mean, ev- everybody seemed to to bless this program or this this transfer so quickly. It really kind of shocked me. I thought we would see a little more resistance, but uh, no, not not a drop. So well, kudos think, to all those agencies that were involved. Sure, I th- and I think a lot of it. I, everybody wants to see them back. I mean. You know, they want to see that reintroduction. They want to see them thrive. We have the, I, I feel that we have the, a great area for them, you know, especially with the reservation oh, of the speaking, coal mines no, and yeah. everything. Speaking of the area, have you been down in the fall to hear those things bugle? I haven't made it because I'm usually still oh. working, but I, I've been <laughs> Well, I feel your pain. I'm definitely going to make the trip this year. Is is the Tomlin Reserve the best place to hear that and view that? Cause yeah. We were, we yeah, were. sure is. I I had the opportunity to go this fall, and you know, I went down, and I was kind of joking with the with our biologist Randy Kelly. I said, you know, Randy, if I don't see anything, that's okay. I said, just <laughs> let's just go and and have a good day. I'm always happy just to get out in the woods. Yeah, definitely. yeah, absolutely. So we, so we get down there, and of course, he knows where they're at. I mean, Randy, he is such a dedicated employee. He treats those elk as if they are his own children. So he, I, th- I think, he knows where everyone's at all the time. Anyway, <laughs> so we, we we get down there, and um, it was just unreal hearing the sounds coming out of some of those hollows and we were up on top of uh, one of those 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 highest points there at tomlin and uh, that's awesome. uh, uh, gives, i gives was bumps. just astounded yeah. yeah so we have uh we've spoke with uh logan klingler and he's uh, he's actually a customer of ours buys our calls mm-hmm. and uh, he's worked on the elk project with the observation tagging process and things like that so you know, we've we've talked to him, and he says that the you know the habitat and everything for these animals in West Virginia is perfect. So they they are thriving in our you know woods. Yes, yes, I completely agree with that, and I believe that that Randy and all of our other folks involved would would also concur. Yes. Yep. I wonder if uh, Brett would give us a heads up, you know, before they before they start doing this lottery <laughs> thing. Well, the reason the reason I'm asking is because you know Nature's Voice Game Calls is going to have to make an elk call, bud. We have. Oh, we, we, go. got <laughs> we got elk calls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, they've been they've been used in Colorado. Oh, and they've been heck used yeah, in man. See something? Yeah. I didn't even know. Oh, you're right. ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah see, nice, nice. We got her Mike, going, you, bud. Uh, you're going to follow a little bit closer to what we do here. Uh, <laughs> nah, yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> so the legislative session's in full swing. So what's some of the things on the books this year that you can discuss that's coming up? You know, there's such a, a, a wide number of bills. I believe I heard early on the first week there was over 600 House bills and 300 wow. Senate bills. Yeah, great numbers, and uh, you know it's great to see we've got a, a bunch of legislators on on both sides, House and Senate, that are just. I mean, it's great to see the enthusiasm, full of ideas, and uh, you know tomorrow we'll we'll do a uh, House Ag and Natural Resources Committee meeting, and I think there's a couple of bills in there right now. It's at the stage where the bills are in committees and they're working their way through. And I mean, there's been some that have hit the floor and passed. We've not had anything specifically related to DNR uh, that's going to have any significant impact. We're doing, uh, we did introduce an auto renewal bill for our licenses where we'll be able to, uh, if you buy hard cards, you can, once this bill passes, if the bill passes, uh, then we'll be able to uh, allow folks to purchase a couple of years at one time, and there may be a slight discount included to do so. See, that's uh, how that's I did mine really last the, time. I bought the three-year. Yep, it does. It is worth it. Plus, it uh, 
it keeps you keeps you safe early January if well, you forget to go yeah. by it and get out rabbit hunting or it something. It screws with you too, though, because I got to thinking, I you know that early season muzzleloader. I'm like, go out there heritage season, right? Yeah, the heritage season. Go out yeah, there. I'm like, heritage. oh crap. Did I, buy, <laughs> yep. I didn't buy my license this year. Yeah. And then I look at it. Oh, like, oh yeah, it's still good till next year. I'm good. Mm-hmm. There you go. So exactly. Hey, I mean, we all fall victim to that. My son and I were headed out on a rabbit hunt just a, a couple of weeks ago, and he looked over and he said. I can't remember if I bought my license or not. Like, get on your darn phone and do it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a nice thing too. So, you have yeah. that opportunity to yeah. just get online there and do it as well. That's good. You yeah. betcha. And you know, I, I encourage as many parents out there as I can to buy that lifetime license when those kids are young. Oh, right, it does sure. save quite a bundle. And you know, I was one of the fortunate ones too. My grandfather purchased a, a lifetime license for me when I hit fifteen, and I never had to buy an annual license. Wow. Early on i didn't realize how valuable it was sure but today yeah every time i see that license or think about it i certainly remember my grandfather and all those hunting trips we took and oh, the, yeah. what he did to keep me in this sport that's great yeah. that's awesome yeah, i got i got my daughter one i i screwed the pooch and forgot to get my son one but i still got time he's a, <laughs> oh left old little buddy out yeah he's, oh he's still how old young. is he he's only six so i still got time okay yeah, yeah, you're still, I think the next threshold's maybe 10-ish. Yeah. I, I can't remember those. And and I've got a granddaughter that's four, about to turn five in May. So we may push pretty hard to go ahead and beat that, that five-year mark on her too. Right. That's yep. great. All right, so one more question, and then we'll let you go. We know you're a busy man. Got to get up early in the oh, morning. Oh, all good. <laughs> um, so how many of those sessions during the legislative session do you attend or are you required to attend? Um. Early in the early in the session, usually the the committee meetings, I try to go to as many of them and listen in if there's a bill that does affect uh, DNR or anything mm-hmm. close to it. Um, you know, I was there yesterday and today. I'll be there tomorrow. Um, and it does kind of vary by season. Uh, I've got a, a another deputy director, Wendy Green, and her her main duty this time of the year is to to follow every committee meeting she is the one that is is listening to every audio video clip senate house keeping us informed gotcha. nice. um she puts in a lot of time i would say i'm up there at least two three days a week a couple committee meetings so not not a lot yeah. i do like the connection because especially in areas where we might have some kind of challenge whether it be a a state park issue, a WMA issue or whatever. I like to be involved with the senators and delegates just so we know each other. And, you know, that, that working relationship does mean a lot because, uh, you know, just like anybody that's just freshly elected, if they don't have a a background in, in uh, any of our natural resources, it, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So we want to provide as much support as we can. And, uh, you know, our, our delegates and senators make it easy. So grateful for that. Yep, for sure. Dave, you got a scripture for this evening? Or if I put you on the spot? You know I do. Well, oh, you, know, you know what? I always do. Of, <laughs> something hit me last week, and, and I do have several, but but it was really good. So I was talking with Kenny Davis, and, of course, we've sponsored him this year, and he's just done a great job, and he has absolutely jumped in with both feet into this youth, this youth side of it. But we were chatting, and he says, hey, uh, and, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the company that's doing this arrow for him, but he said uh, – Warhead Arrow. He said, hey, it's warhead. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So yep. he's got a a, a a a quote out of Genesis on there. Yes, it's Genesis twenty seven three, and it uh, it's the one that says, uh, "Take the uh, bow and quiver to the field and bring me some venison." And I found that to just be so cool when I was really impressed by by that guy because you guys know at the end of the day that's all that matters yes we sure. we we, pl- we have our blessings to to be thankful for every day but <laughs> yep. um, uh, th- th- that's probably yeah. the what i i would close with today because it just hit me so so hard that you know hey it's somebody's actually putting this into our sport yeah and uh, I, I respect that guy well we thank you for that we we always do a scripture of the day on our podcast and you know, Dave here is usually one that does that, so we appreciate you yeah, chiming nice in there and, and giving that. That's I like awesome. It. That's great. I, do. I love yeah. it. That's great. Yep. That and it is great. fitting for what we just. It is with. sure Absolutely. is absolutely, and that's how that's how it works. It just that's the kind of things that hit you. Yeah. It it you don't get to look it up. You you're not looking it up. You just so gotta flow with it. Sometimes it just boom. It yep. hits you right there, and you, you speak it from the mouth. 
Yep, thank you very much. We we sure appreciate that. Well, Mr. McMillian, we sure appreciate you coming on this evening, and uh, we appreciate your time and your service and what you do for our state within the West Virginia DNR. It was a pleasure speaking with you tonight. Well, thank thank you guys for having me. I'd be happy to be on any time, and uh, we've got a commission meeting coming up February the, I believe it's the 25th. It's on a Sunday afternoon, and we're going to have it at the new Claudia Workman Center uh, in uh, Southridge in Char- Charleston. So I encourage everyone to come out and get involved at those commission meetings. That's how we make changes. Yes, sir. C- yeah. Come to, let, let, let's hear let's hear the voices. All righty. Well, so, again, we thank you, and we thank you for what you do for our state there with the West Virginia DNR. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Well, there you go, folks. You just heard it from the director of the West Virginia DNR, Brett McMillian. Such a great guy, man. Yeah. That was oh, that yeah. was an awesome interview. That was great. Great interview. I mean, you Absolutely. know, when we met him up there just for the few seconds that we did, you know, we were at the booth and somebody had said, that's, that's the new director of the West Virginia DNR. You need to talk to him. And I, you know, I just, I addressed him by his name because they done told me. And, you know, he, he kind of liked that. And he come over and talked to us at the booth and tried some calls out and he went on about his way. But, you know, he was, he was there at the show, you know, talking to everybody. I mean, he's, yeah, he's a real personable guy. Yeah. So, real likable guy, too. So, we sure appreciate his time this evening. Well, guys, be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, about 18 other different networks. You know, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. We appreciate everybody listening tonight. Everybody have a good evening. Thank you. This segment of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by AMG Network Hosting, LLC a national independent agent for most major telecommunication service providers. If your business is in need of internet, phones, credit card processing, let AMG Hosting help you compare options. They work with over 100 national carriers, and they can help you choose the best option for your needs. Our independence means we are loyal to our customers, not a brand or a company. Call us today at 304-608-3653 or visit us at amgnhconsulting.com amgnhconsulting.com phone number again is 304-608-3653 amg network hosting llc